Welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. We're going to be carrying on with our Mr. Guru Game Jam tutorials showing off sort of how I gained some of these uh, random little effects. One of the which being these sort of floating platforms that you can kind of jump to and um, use to kind of create these kind of interesting uh, obstacles. Uh, I use this quite a bit in this game for the platforming side of things. Um, uh, super simple uh, way of getting this so I will uh, show you that now. Okay, so we're in uh, our sort of world, if you like, and um, I'm going to create a new blueprint. Please excuse my lovely mess of stuff going on here. Uh, so let's create a new blueprint class, and we're going to create uh, an actor class, and we're going to call this, um, we'll call it floaty panel, uh, floaty panel toot. Why not, right? Butchered it, but it's fine. I think I called it a lift. Um, but as you can see, I didn't optimize it for uh, multiple use. I just kind of, for speed, I just copy and pasted and just amended the values that I needed uh, as and when I needed them. So let's get uh, this open. Okay, so once you've got your blueprint open, we're just going to add in a uh, static mesh. And we'll call this um, panel uh, or lift. We'll call it lift. We'll keep with the lift kind of thing. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look for a uh, cube. Just a very basic cube. Um, we'll go with a static mesh cube. Uh, looks lovely. And what we'll do is we're just going to thin it out like so. Uh, that should do quite nicely and then what we'll do is we'll just lift this up to kind of sit um, if we make it zero sorry location zero 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 like so um, that might not be the best as well because we kind of want this to sit uh, in the middle so that it, when it moves it moves in the right area we can actually just do that. There we go. Great. So now that we've got um, a panel, we need to make it move. So what we need to do now is go over to the event graph here. And we can get rid of all the event begin overlaps and all that sort of stuff. We just need the event begin play. And we need two custom functions. Uh, or custom events, just even. And I'm going to call one uh, move lift. And the other one is going to be called reverse. Oh, no. Another custom event. My apologies. Custom event. And we'll call this one reserve, reverse reverse lift. I think I spelled that wrong. No, I didn't. Reverse lift. Right. <laughs> and on event begin play, all we want this thing to do is to move lift. So we'll call that custom function there there we go and that's all we need to do for the event be event to begin play i'm going to create two booleans uh one is uh we're going to call one forward and one uh oh we just need the one actually because we can just um just true and false that okay so we're going to set that on both of these uh and this will be how we the the mechanism knows whether to move forward and backwards so we want it true on the move forward and we want it uh, false on the move backwards from that point on we're going to make a timeline and we can just leave the default name it really doesn't make much difference and we're going to hook these up so we're going to hook the reverse lift you guessed it into the reserve and we're going to hook the move lift up into the play and what we need to do is we need to pull this lift out and we need to uh, set world location. Now, this is where it gets uh, kind of interesting and you'll see this all in a moment. Um, but let's finish up the actual run of the code first and then we can do the timeline. So all that we need to do now at the end is check to see if, if we're moving forward or backwards. Uh, so if forward is true, 
we're going to then want to reverse the lift. So just drag off of here and reverse lift, call that function. And if it's false, we're going to move lift forward. Um, very simple stuff. Um, but once we've done the timeline part, essentially we should have a working uh, lift moving back and forward. Now, I normally run a delay for the time of how long it takes to actually move to the location. Now, you need to do the whole process. So, for example, in my timeline, it runs for about, uh, I think it actually does run for five seconds, to be fair. Um, but if you want it to stop, once it reaches a location, add an extra second. So with this one, it doesn't stop. So it hits one point and then it immediately returns to the other point. Um, but potentially if you want it to sort of stop in it there for a second, like I have that later on in the world, just add uh, an extra second onto the delay or reduce your timeline down by a second. So double tap on the timeline either way and we're going to add a float track and we need a couple of keys and the first one is going to sit at zero seconds so set the time to zero and we're going to set uh, the other time to five seconds oh I'm going to try to at least if you need to reduce your track time you can do that here with the length so if you have it going a longer distance and you know it's you want it to happen at a certain speed you might want to increase the length of the track and tell it to do that over a longer period of time um, that requires a little bit of playing around in your game for depending on what you want um, but the shorter distance you have going from point A to point B the quicker it's going to do that uh, with a shorter time so if it's like only a few meters away from one another and you say I want this done in a second it's going to get to that point very fast. Uh, if you want it to happen slower, so you say, I want it to get to point B um, really slow, you might want to say, okay, the length needs to be 10 seconds, and it gets from point A to point B over 10 seconds. That's all down to you and, and how you want to set up your puzzles or, or world and things like that. Um, but yeah, so we have this at the moment, but this isn't really kind of good enough. We need to know what we want to do with our lift. So the first thing we also need as well is if we go back into the um, event graph and we drag off here, we want to make vector. It automatically um, plugs it into the X value, but that's not necessarily the direction we want this lift to move in. So what we want to do now is let's find somewhere in my world to do this. So uh, we want to do it somewhere we can see it and test it. So let's do it in our starting point. Here we go, so, so we can see it when we log in. Uh, so all of the world values matter. Um, so let's find it, where is it? Uh, floaty, where is it? Floaty, there we go. So we have its starting location. These, if we want it to move, I'm gonna make it move from here to here basically. So world, real world values matter. So its location at the moment is minus 1033 and we are going we want it to move on the y value. So let's take the x and put that into the y because that's what we want to manipulate. The x values for this lift need to be the same as they are in the real world. If you set them to zero, they're going to go to zero, zero in the, in the world location. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then in the timeline, we need to determine the values we're going from point A to point B. So let's open up the timeline. And we want to get our first point, so our starting position's Y value. So let's put that into the value and click enter. Now it's going to change the, uh, the, the, the map obviously ever so slightly uh, and then let's put it into the position we want it to start at which is going to be uh, to finish that sorry is 1634 
so we put that into the second value. Let's redo this, there we go. So we can see it's starting at 391 on the Y and it will finish at 1634. Uh, so let's click play and we should be able to hopefully now see this already working. There it is, it's okay. already moving. Experiment 2967 back. Test subject you can see it's happening quite uh, fast, so again, if no. you want to slow that down, Wait, you can you say, drunk? okay, I want it to get from point A to point B no. in uh, four uh, seconds go or on three then. seconds if you want to speed Yay. it up. Or if you want it to slow down, you might say, okay, I want that to happen over ten seconds. Congratulations, uh, of course, you made it. If we jump on it, uh, it will the carry cage. it with it. We opened and it. Oh, we yeah. can do some extra puzzles. Simple as that, very, very simple. Um I'm trying to find a better way of um, setting up the X and Z values um, because it's annoying that you have to create a new one to change these values. Uh, potentially the best thing I can think of is that we promote these to variables we can af um, affect in world so we can just uh, drag it in and, and write them out there. Uh, but that's not going to save you on the Y values either. You still have to come in to change these anyway. Um, yeah, so it's still really good and it works very, very well. Um, as I said, I just had to create seven different lifts uh, for each of the levels that have moving platforms. But um, overall, uh, very happy with the results I got uh, for this puzzle um, and getting it moving. But hopefully you found this very useful. Um, if you know of any ways you can actually amend these to um, save you changing the values every time, that would be really, really cool. Um, the only thing I can probably think of actually while I'm here is maybe using a set relative, oh, relative, uh, location maybe, uh, and then we can probably set these to zero maybe. Uh, I'm only spitballing here, so let's see if it works. It might not, but the other way does work. Let's just see if this does as well. That'd be interesting to know. Because it's taking its relative transform, um, and okay, it's not even there. So to... no, it doesn't work. That's fine. <laughs> you can do that, um, but fine. At least we have um, the other way. So yeah, if anyone knows of a, of a way we can uh, input these x and y values without um, having to completely uh, rewrite them every time, um, that would be awesome. But uh, that's how I got this effect, and by doing it this way you can at least get um, moving platforms in your game. Uh, so hopefully you found this useful. Uh, thank you so much guys for watching. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already. It's free to do and you can always change your mind down the line. And of course, these games are available to play at the moment on itch.io. I will put the links in the description. There is a survey you can take as well to uh, see um, your thoughts and feelings on the game. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for all the support, guys. We're nearly at 2,000 subscribers. It's, it's amazing in such a short period of time as well. So uh, I couldn't be any happier. So thank you very, very much for all your support. Uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.